Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the lecture on components of continuous casting unit. So, uh, we will be talking about the different essential details and the uh, components of the continuous casting unit and we will be talking also about its significance in the uh, continuous casting process. So, uh, as we uh, move on, uh, we will talk about uh, these uh, following components like hot metal handling system. Then you have tundis, mold, water sprays, drive system and then cut off machine. So, all these uh, you know uh, system, uh, all these components make one continuous casting uh, unit and uh, hot metal handling system means it will start from the uh, you know that system which will be handling that hot metal, it will be bringing that hot metals that is especially the ladle. Uh, then uh, the ladle as we know that ladle uh, from ladle the metal will be transferred to tundis and then to the mold and after mold you have uh, the uh, you know spray zone water spraying is done then you have the driving system uh, and then further in the end you are uh, uh, cutting off. So, you have a cut off machine. So, we will be uh, talking one by one about uh, these systems. Coming to the uh, hot metal handling system, so uh, as you know that uh, it, it brings the hot metal and it, uh, it its job is to pour it uh, into the tundis. So, earlier the lip poured or the stoppered trimming ladles were uh, used, so uh, that was the uh, practice earlier. Uh, but now, most of in most of the cases, bottom poured with a slide gate system. Uh, you know ladles are used. So, uh, you will have uh, the uh, uh, metal coming from the bottom and then you will have the slide gate uh, for controlling that flow of the liquid metal. So, you will have a slide gate and uh, by operating that you can allow the liquid metal to fall from the ladle into the um, tundis. Uh, now, small capacity ladles are used for the uh, smaller units. Uh, and uh, there will be uh, larger capacity ladles will be there for the multiple strand uh, systems like uh, when you have uh, the single strand uh, tundis then you uh, need the small capacity ladles which will be smaller in sizes. However, if you have uh, the uh, you know multi strand tundis, multi strand uh, you know 6 strand, 4 strand or so or 8 strand even in those cases uh, you know. Uh, uh, we use the larger capacity uh, ladles. Now, uh, presently what we do is we normally use these uh, dolomite line uh, ladles uh, you know uh, to control the uh, dissolved oxygen. So, uh, what has been seen that uh, you know you may have the lining with uh, dolomite or you may have the lining with bauxite, you may have even the uh, lining with the silica. And it has been seen that uh, the, the PPM of the oxygen which is uh, uh, observed in the case of dolomite lined uh, uh, ladles or even the bauxite uh, uh, lined ladles they are lesser uh, and, the, and the observation has been found uh, by Tata Steel. So, it was that uh, it was about 2 to 6 PPM uh, of oxygen was observed in the case of dolomite uh, you know uh, lined ladles and then uh, uh, it may go a little bit higher uh, when you go with other uh, you know like silica lined. Then uh, you know uh, the oxygen level. So, what uh, has been shown this is uh, a typical uh, you know it is about 10 to 20 uh, ppm uh, in the case of silica lined ladles. Now, uh, steel will be treated with the calcium for the uh, deoxidation and uh, desulfurization. So, in most of the cases we try to have the minimum amount of oxygen as well as sulfur is also deleterious for the quality steel. 
So, we also uh, try to treat with uh, the calcium uh, for the uh, deoxidation and the uh, desulphurization. So, uh, that is what uh, is uh, normally the practice uh, for the um, you know uh, in, in the industries uh, by using the uh, calcium. Uh, common practice to use the uh, lateral furnace for secondary refining. Now, uh, what we have earlier seen that uh, nowadays it is a very uh, common uh, practice to use the uh, lateral furnace. So, that is uh, a very important tool for the uh, secondary refining uh, process and uh, in that basically you have this ladder uh, with bottom gas purging. So, you will have the purging from the uh, you know bottom the gas uh, purging is done and that uh, acts as the uh, teeming uh, ladle. Now, it is generally lined with uh, carbonaceous uh, you know magnesia bricks. So, um, uh, that is the uh, normal uh, practice. Now, when uh, we try to have even the uh, smaller amount of uh, carbon or so. So, um, uh, you know uh, for that for the decarburization many a times we use the VOD process also. And uh, you know while also using the magnesia brick lining of the ladle, then also we can ensure the uh, low level of carbon uh, you know uh, that is uh, what is found to be. Uh, so, that is uh, the part uh, you know so that is the first part. So, because uh, the ladle will be bringing and then ladle you have the that can also be used as ladle furnace. So, you will have the ladle which is also lined you can have uh, you know uh, the uh, you know the lining with uh, different materials. Uh, and uh, you know uh, earlier the practice was that uh, many type of treatments were done in the uh, uh, tundis also, but now uh, tundis will be simply acting as the reservoir. So, uh, so normally this uh, you know this is about the hot metal handling system. Now, we come to the next stage that is your uh, you know tundis. Now, uh, in the tundis as you see that uh, tundis will be uh, that vessel which will be after that uh, you know uh, ladle. So, uh, so the tundis uh, will be receiving the liquid metal from the uh, ladle and then it will be uh, distributing it or it will be passing that uh, liquid metal to the mold. So, as you see that uh, the tundis uh, uh, will be necessary to team the steel from the uh, ladle to the mold. It uh, acts as a buffer vessel uh, between mold and the ladle. Buffer vessel as we have already discussed that uh, uh, that will be the vessel which will be supplying the liquid metal whenever uh, even in the case of ladle changeover. So, uh, one ladle when gets uh, emptied uh, then the, when the that ladle is uh, removed and then next ladle comes to um, uh, supply the liquid metal to the uh, tundis. So, so, in that uh, situation even the continuity of the uh, liquid steel uh, uh, from the tundis to the mold is maintained. So, that is why it is known as a uh, buffer uh, vessel between uh, the mold and the ladle. Now, it maintains the uh, casting continuity. So, uh, as we have already discussed that uh, uh, even if there is no ladle, uh, it will uh, go on uh, you know uh, having the there is will be continuity in getting the liquid uh, supplied from uh, turn this to the mold. So, the casting continuity will be maintained. It uh, improves the yield because uh, you know uh, from there it is going to add to the mold and you are getting the finished product. So, that way uh, uh, you know many a times now uh, in most of the cases what we normally do is uh, we try to preheat the uh, tundis because uh, the tundis which is there at room temperature and if you are uh, initially uh, supplying the liquid metal to the tundis, then uh, uh, there may be temperature drop in the liquid uh, steel and uh, that may affect the quality of the steel. 
So, in most of the cases you are preheating so that uh, the heat loss uh, which uh, will normally take place that will be uh, minimized uh, you know in those cases. Then uh, the tundis will control the steel flow uh, more accurately because uh, you have the uh, uh, you know uh, uh, control mechanism and uh, you are basically uh, uh, you know uh, you are controlling that so that the uh, constant amount of uh, liquid steel uh, should uh, fall uh, into the um, ladle. So, also because uh, it has a very large uh, surface area and uh, in that case normally um, you know uh, during the uh, change over also there will be very small uh, decrease in the uh, height of the uh, free surface of uh, of liquid metal in the uh, tundis. So, the change in the velocity will be very very small. So, uh, basically the steel flow uh, will be controlled more accurately uh, because of um, the tundis. Now, uh, this uh, uh, tundis also will be subdividing the flow into several streams. So, what happens that uh, when uh, the liquid metal will uh, be going? So, so when uh, as, as you see that uh, uh, in the case of uh, so you have uh, initially you have the uh, you know ladle and then you will have a, a tundis. So, this will be your tundis uh, in fact and uh, in the tundis uh, you know this is so this will be uh, so there will be entry of liquid metal. Uh, from the ladle into the tundis and then uh, you have uh, these are the you know outlets. So, these are the exit ports of the uh, tundis. Now, in normal case uh, you know you have uh, you know this is this is how uh, one stopper rod is also um, there. So, this is uh, known as a stopper rod. So, this is stopper rod basically as we are discussing that this will be controlling. So, you can uh, put the stopper rod in this uh, zone. So, that will uh, regulate the uh, flow of the liquid steel to the mold. So, here from it is going uh, to the mold, it is going to the mold here. So, uh, basically uh, you have uh, you know uh, this way it, uh, uh, it controls that uh, you know uh, the quality um, I mean quantity of metal which will be flowing into the mold. Now, coming to talk about the uh, dividing the flow into several streams. So, what happens that when the flow will be coming here and when it will be striking. So, metal will be going from here like this and it will be going like this from here. So, this way it will be moving to in the different streams the metal will be going. Now, you have the you may have two strand you may have four strand or six strand. So, this metal is divided into different streams in different directions depending upon the even the configuration of the tundis also. If you have a tundis suppose you have a you know tundis and, and you have the inlet here only and your outlet is only here. In that case anyway liquid metal will hit here and then it has to move in this case. So, there will be some movement this side also. But otherwise, if you are hitting in the middle portion, in that case, uh, you know it will be divided into different streams, and then it will be moving towards the different outlets on the on, on both the sides of the you know inlet stream where it is uh, striking the uh, tundis bottom. So, uh, so that is the job of uh, you know the tundis also that it will be dividing that stream. Now, uh, it will be deflecting the metal streams as the same thing because uh, once it will come and then uh, you know it, it is going towards the wall and because of the wall of the tundis it will be deflecting from there and it will move towards the outlet. The ultimate aim is that in an optimal manner uh, with a proper flow configuration the metal which is entering into the tundis it has to move towards the uh, outlet. Single large mold can be teamed with uh, number of streams. So, um, you know that is possible because you may, you may have different uh, streams and by that you can if you have a large mold then it can be teamed with the number of uh, streams. 
metal level in the tundis uh, can be uh, altered uh, you know uh, because uh, I mean it is altered uh, in the case of you know lateral change over normally. And if, since that uh, you know uh, the level uh, uh, you know whenever many a times uh, our job is also to I mean in earlier times and in earlier times when we are uh, talking about initial days when you have to cast different grades and you have only one uh, turn disk. So, in that in those cases you have to uh, you know uh, uh, decrease the uh, level of the uh, material in the turn disk and then further you have to uh, start filling it. So, so that way uh, you know uh, you can uh, uh, do that uh, in the turn disk. So, so, it will go to certain uh, lesser height and then further you you will start uh, filling it uh, uh, with the ladle. So, the next grade will be started filling. Then uh, you have uh, also the possibility of uh, you know the cleaning of steel in the tundis. So, many you know in the past also it has been seen that there are uh, sometimes the uh, cleaning operation is also uh, done in the tundis. You have uh, uh, and even now uh, because we think of uh, having the tundis uh, to act in such a manner that if there are any inclusions they must float. So, the inclusions must be removed uh, uh, from the steel in the tundis. So, it also works as uh, the reservoir which will be uh, looking towards uh, you know minimizing the inclusion content in the uh, steel So that we will uh, see you know uh, later. Now, uh, it will also help in removing the slag because uh, uh, you know slag if they there are. So, they will be floating at the top. So, if the slags are um, you know entrained. So, because of the flow quiescent flow inside which can be maintained uh, you can allow these slags also to normally in the um, in normal circumstances the slag will be at the top and uh, these. Uh, uh, so, beneath that there will be molten uh, liquid. So, that way uh, it will be uh, you know uh, we also have the uh, uh, you know get the help in uh, removing the slag also. So, because it will be at the top portion and we are uh, taking the uh, liquid uh, you know. So, slag will be towards uh, this top portion and uh, uh, and liquid metal is steamed from here. So, it will be uh, delivered to the mold from here. So, anyway that that slag does not cause any harm and it will be uh, delivered uh, to the mold. So, um, uh, then uh, you know uh, the metal comes towards the uh, mold. Now, we all uh, have already discussed that uh, we uh, uh, this mold is made of uh, the drawn copper tube or machined out of a solid block or is a welded plate construction of high conductivity electrolytic grade copper. So, the mold in the case of uh, continuous casting is made with uh, the high grade uh, electrolytic grade copper and uh, copper is chosen uh, for the obvious reason that it has very high conductivity and it can uh, uh, you know remove the heat of the molten metal very fast. So, uh, but then as we discussed that since the melting temperature of copper is small uh, smaller as compared to or less as compared to that of steel. So, we need to have the you know ext uh, other cooling mechanism constantly uh, so that it can take the heat away quickly and it should not melt also and for that it is uh, normally water cooled and has open bottom and and, uh, uh, and hence closed by a dummy plug bar in the uh, beginning. So, initially in the beginning we uh, close it uh, with a dummy plug bar and then uh, normally it will be have open bottom and then water will be coming and flowing. And during that process that water will be absorbing the heat which will be uh, released by the liquid metal in the mold and uh, then it will be. Uh, uh, that so the uh, water takes the heat uh, and then that is why you will have the change in the temperature of the incoming uh, water and the outgoing water because that water will be taking that uh, heat which is uh, uh, being released by the mold. 
Length of the mold depends on the cooling conditions uh, that uh, form adequate uh, skin before ingot emerges out of it. So, uh, so, so this is very important that uh, what should be the uh, length of the mold and uh, that will be depending upon the uh, cooling conditions. Uh, the cooling conditions has to be such that uh, you know uh, the adequate skin uh, is formed before the ingot emerges out of it. So, as we have uh, you know seen that in the case of uh, mold when the liquid metal will be uh, you know poured through it. So, uh, it will be started uh, you know forming the skin and this skin uh, you know uh, thickness the cell thickness will uh, go on uh, increasing uh, on both the sides. Now, uh, the thing is that uh, when uh, your uh, what should be the height of this mold. So, it has uh, to have uh, you know uh, at, uh, on at such a uh, place. So, that to ensure that there is a, a skin uh, you know freeze of certain thickness uh, and, and then because it has to further come and then it has to move on the rollers and uh, further it has to you know move. Uh, uh, you know uh, and finally, it has to be in horizontal direction. So, uh, there is large amount of uh, pressure of the uh, you know, liquid steel for static pressure is there. So, you ensure that cooling so that uh, uh, skin of uh, uh, adequate uh, thickness is uh, you know developed uh, at the uh, end of the mold. So, that uh, has to be uh, ensured. So, that is what uh, uh, it will be the requirement in the case of uh, mold. Also, uh, it will be avoiding the transverse cracking uh, you know uh, it is oscillated at the rate of 30 to 60 oscillations uh, uh, per uh, minute. So, what is happening we have already seen that uh, you are giving that oscillation uh, for certain regions uh, you have you are giving the negative strip. So, it has to leave that mold and then uh, so, yeah, that oscillation and, and also in the mold we are uh, giving the uh, you know uh, uh, lubrication. So, if you talk about the function of the mold uh, it is to obtain the enough cell thickness of solidified cell to uh, stand bending stresses and ferrostatic pressure of liquid steel uh, from inside. So, what we see nowadays we have seen that also your mold is from there itself it is uh, somewhat curved. So, you will have the bending stresses and also you have the ferrostatic pressure of the liquid steel. So, the uh, you know the cell thickness which uh, should be achieved at the exit point of the mold that is your primary cooling zone it must be adequate uh, to bear you know to stand uh, the, the bending stresses as well as the, the ferrostatic pressure of the liquid from inside. Then uh, its also job is to equalize the temperature uh, all through the liquid steel mass. So, it, it must ensure that there is a proper temperature otherwise there may be different st uh, structures um, on different sides and uh, that also ensures internal and surface quality of the product because uh, there are likely to have uh, the a generation of cracks or other kind of defects because of the improper cooling conditions in the mold. So, there also it is ensured. So, you have earlier vertical molds uh, then you go we get nowadays the curved molds which are complicated and modern molds are tapered to narrow down towards the uh, bottom and it is uh, basically to account for the shrinkage because when we know that uh, the, you know there is tapering uh, which is done uh, because the metal which is getting solidified and it has higher density. So, there will be shrinking of the metal and, and to account for that there is some taper which is given uh, you know the uh, uh, in the mold uh, to account for that. So, that is another uh, you know sincere calculation which needs to be done uh, you know to avoid any kind of defect in the case of continuous casting. They are invariably mold is also invariably lubricated to assist the stripping. So, as we have discussed that there will be 
uh, some lubricating mechanism which should be there in between the mold wall and the uh, liquid metal which uh, that will get solidified in the skin. Uh, so, that there should not be sticking and uh, then there is proper stripping of that uh, product from the mold. So, that also is ensured by having the choice of proper uh, mold lubricants. Next comes uh, in the line will be the submerged entry nozzle. Now, the uh, submerged entry nozzle is uh, the uh, ceramic tube which has a closed bottom and is connected to the tundis at one end while the other end is uh, dipped in the molten pool in the concast mold. So, uh, that is uh, basically uh, you know if you to talk about this tundis. So, from here this will go and this will be submerged entry nozzle and then it will go into the mold and here it is closed and you have opening on these sides. So, this way you have uh, this is your uh, submerged entry nozzle. So, uh, in the uh, slab casting uh, this SCN has two openings in the opposite direction and in blooms it may have four openings to distribute the steel uniformly. So, it may have uh, you know depending upon what you are uh, uh, casting you may have either two openings or four openings uh, to distribute in the steel because from there it will come. So, normally when you if you look at the uh, you know liquid. So, it will go and then uh, it, it, it moves like this it will f strike here some will go up and then some will go down. So, like that liquid metal will come and uh, so, you will have a loop also formed here in many cases. So, uh, that is uh, you know because of the submerged entry nozzle which is there which is uh, closed uh, from one end and another end will be you know from the uh, turn this it will be coming uh, down. So, it is on the one end on turn this another is in the mold. Now, uh, coming to the submerged entry nozzle you know organ gas is used to prevent sticking of steel uh, to the SCN surface and aspiration of air through the tube pores and joints. So, that is uh, normally the practice that you are using this argon gas. So, that uh, the uh, SCN surface is not stuck to the steel and uh, also the there is uh, you no know, aspiration of air. Mainly uh, Al 2 O 3 and C is used as the base material for making the uh, SCN and also you may have the zirconium oxide carbon is also uh, in many cases it is uh, used. The main problem of using the SCN is that it gets clogged due to the accumulation of alumina from inside. So, many a times the alumina which is coming you know uh, because of that there may be clogging in the SCN and that will be leading to decrease in the flow rate causing uh, problems in solidification of steel in the concast mold. So, that is uh, really a challenge because uh, if there is clogging then there will be decrease in the flow rate of the steel which is coming through that SCN ports. So, that is another challenge and that is because of the inclusions or, or the alumina which is uh, you know accumulated. Uh, mold lubrication. So, mold lubrication is uh, you know uh, the uh, earlier you had the moisture uh, free uh, rapeseed oil was used as the mold lubrication as we had discussed that uh, you have to have something lubrication so that there is no sticking. Now, we have mold fluxes are used to have the smooth casting operation and it will be added as the powder in the mold over the liquid steel surface. So, we say that is the normal practice you have a powder which will be uh, given at the surface and when it will be coming in contact with the liquid surface it will be melted and then it will be going uh, in between the uh, mold wall and uh, so, so there will be a layer of that lubricant and that will allow uh, you know that will ensure that there is no sticking of the surface. And also uh, the another advantage is that it will be uh, preventing the uh, you know oxidation to take place from atmospheric air. So, this is the uh, example of these uh, mold flux powders. Uh, then the fun function of these mold flux are that uh, there will be lubrication of this, this stand, then you have transfer heat from stand to the mold wall uh, and then thermally insulate the top steel surface that is what we have discussed, uh, protecting the surface from atmospheric oxidation and many a times it will be ab ab absorbing the inclusions because inclusion if they go up so that uh, powder 
they will be uh, attracting those inclusions. So, that is another uh, advantage of these uh, uh, mold lubrication mechanism and uh, they are in, in different forms we use it like fly ash based powder, synthetic mixture, pre-fused and ground flour powders and then granulated powders also. So, that way uh, we give this mold lubrication. After that uh, you have the uh, secondary cooling of the solid product and uh, it will be uh, accomplished by quenching using high pressure water sprays. So, we are using those hot water sprays and then the, uh, the cooling is done. So, 90 percent of total heat uh, is the, uh, to be extracted in that uh, secondary cooling zone after the mold that zone starts and uh, spray design in the uh, curved mold is uh, far too critical because the uh, ingot has to be bent continuously. So, they are also it is uh, bending. So, it is uh, another challenge there that it is bending. So, you will have less area here more area. So, properly you have to have the cooling. So, that uh, you know uh, the uniform structure and uniform properties uh, are to be ascertained. And then finally, it will go and then ultimately we are cutting it once we ensure that it is completely solidified. So, you will have a cutting torch and that will be cutting it. So, they, these are basically the you know uh, the components of the uh, continuous casting uh, units and uh, you can study more from the uh, reference and textbooks uh, to have more understanding which will help us uh, to discuss you know uh, more on the issues in our coming lectures. Thank you very much.